Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make a delicious and scrumptious drink full of probiotic and friendly bacteria, kefir. I use raw milk, but you can use any whole milk that you have access to. Also, the kefir grains that I use to make my own kefir, I purchase them from a website that I highly recommend. I don't have any affiliation with them, but it's called Cultured Food Life. And let's go ahead and start making kefir. I use one tablespoon of kefir grains per two cups of raw milk or whole milk. In this case, I am using two tablespoons of kefir grains. Therefore, I'm going to be using four cups of milk. You're going to notice that I repeat this process at the end of the video. I like to make kefir every 36 hours. If you have a larger family, you're going to need to use a little bit more milk and a little bit of a little bit more of the kefir grains. I give it a little bit of a stir and then I'm going to close it and put it in a corner of my counter. If you notice, I removed the uh, gasket of the lid and I'm going to close it not tight. I'm just going to let some oxygen go in uh, a little bit loose. Some people like to use cheesecloth. I prefer to use a lid so my kefir is not that yeasty. It has more of the friendly bacteria, more probiotic than yeast. So therefore I choose to close my kefir jar where I'm going to be making kefir with a plastic lid. This is a corner of my kitchen of my kitchen counter and I'm going to cover it with a towel and I'm going to let it rest in there for about 36 hours. Now as you can see this is 36 hours later the cream of the raw milk floats and also the kefir has the kefir grains have been making kefir and there are pockets of whey at the bottom of the jar and that way I know that my kefir is ready. Now let's go ahead and strain it. As you can see, I'm using a plastic strainer. You can also use stainless steel. You can use a food grade stainless steel strainer. And I'm using a rubber spatula. And I have a clean jar. That clean jar, I'm gonna use it after I strain my kefir. You're gonna notice that the grains are gonna be left on the strainer. And I'm gonna put those grains in a, a clean jar. Let's look at the consistency of that kefir. And as I pour it, you're gonna see that it looks almost like yogurt. It's, it's kind of thick, but it's also liquidy. Some of the whey has separated from the milk and it should smell uh, almost cheesy, but it should not smell putrid. If it smells putrid, something has gone wrong and you should toss it. Um, I'm going to strain it and uh, very uh, delicately. I don't want to splash all over my countertop. And as you can see, the whey and the kefir, it's going to pour through that strainer into my bowl. Again, I leave my kefir to ferment for 36 hours because of the amount of milk and kefir grains that I'm using. But if you're gonna be using less milk and let's say only one tablespoon of kefir grains, you might leave your kefir for maybe 24 hours or less. You, uh, as you start making kefir, you're going to notice how it behaves also depending on the temperature in your house. If your kefir is too, uh, uh, Hard for you too sour then you might want to leave it on the counter for less time but if you like it sour uh, that's perfectly fine it's up to your taste or we you might want to add some fruits to that and I'm going to show you later what I do to my kefir and it's the way that 
we enjoy it the most in our house. As you can see, as I continue straining it, some of the grains uh, are starting to uh, remain. And as I strain it more and more and more, you're going to see how those kefir grains look like. They actually look almost like pieces of cauliflower. And um, I don't rinse my kefir grains like some people do. I just use them the way they are just like that and i transfer them to a clean jar but i want to show you how these kefir grains look like um, if you have extras because they are going to multiply as you make more and more kefir you can add them to shakes you can actually eat them or feed them to your animals or you can add them back into your own kefir batch and turn it into a shake with fruits. If you noticed, I am using the same jar where I was fermenting the kefir grain with the milk. And I am adding my new strained kefir to that jar. I don't want to waste any of that deliciousness. And I'm going to close my jar with another plastic lid with the gasket and put it either in the refrigerator uh, for it to be enjoyed or you can add some fruit to it. We enjoy it with a banana and uh, I use my immersion blender and I turn it into a delicious shake and it makes it sweeter. Raw kefir tends to have a little bit of a uh, mild tart taste. And as you can see, I'm going to be using my immersion blender. And the banana not only gives it a, a sweeter taste, but also if you want to do a second fermentation and increase those beneficial bacteria after you uh, blend it with the banana, you can put it again in the on the countertop for uh, about half a day and it will have more and more beneficial bacteria for you but this is the way we like it and after we blend it with the banana we put it in the refrigerator we enjoy it cold it's nice and creamy now if you're going to be using other fruits such as strawberries and blueberries please make sure that these uh, strawberries and blueberries are not sprayed with pesticides. Remember that you're dealing with friendly bacteria. And if possible, try to uh, find some organic fruits. Now we're gonna start the process again. Those kefir grains that I strained, I am going to add them to my jar. I have about two tablespoons of kefir grains and I'm going to be adding about four to five uh, cups of milk depending on, sometimes I have a little bit more than two uh, tablespoons of kefir grains. Again, I'm going to close my lid very loosely. Place the jar in a little corner of my countertop and cover it with a towel if you liked this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and i hope and i pray that you have a very blessed day